Oh, I'm going to disappear for a couple of days while I get my head into more research because, uh, you know what, research requires legwork and legwork is time and it requires effort. So, you know, I'm just going to make these quick couple of ones just to uh, put out a couple of things. Now, the first one is about Adrian Peter Brunock and is he a bankrupt? Well, let me just point you to the Commonwealth Courts portal, their official website. This is from the Federal Circuit Court, Federal Law, Brisbane Registry. The file number is a bankruptcy register notice number in 2018. Now, what has happened is that uh, the Australian Tax Office have served a bankruptcy notice on Adrian Peter Brennock and uh, that requires uh, a certain level of activity from Peter Adrian Peter Brennock to perform for the court all the things legally required under this little thing here called the law, the Bankruptcy Act of 1966. So according to all those laws and instructions, he was to appear on the 19th of June for uh, basically, uh, if it's uncontested, it uh, gets ruled bankrupt. But he put in a notice to set aside the bankruptcy. Set aside bankruptcy notice was filed at that particular court hearing when all the, um, what I'm assuming would be the summary evidence of his accounts and statement of affairs would be presented before the court to state that yes or no, uh, or disprove or prove any of the um, reasons for being made that bankrupt by the Australian Tax Office. So he appeared um, and filed the notice to set aside the bankruptcy notice. So in other words, he pretty much asked the court to hear his evidence that the tax office didn't have a valid reason to make him bankrupt. So uh, if you look at the documentation here, that document was lodged on the 12th of June 2018. And on the 15th of June, a form B4 was sent out to the tax office advising them that this B2 form had been filed by Adrian Peter Brennock and that they needed to appear in court uh, as summonsed as the respondent. As you can clearly see here that Adrian Peter Brennock is the applicant and the respondent is the tax office. So he's basically challenging the tax officer's right to um, bankrupt him. Now, on the 14th of August, the court dismissed that application to set aside the bankruptcy notice and everything was finalised by consent. So at that point, one would say that Adrian Peter Brennock's bankruptcy came into effect on the 14th of August 2018. Now, uh, I have got, uh, let's have a look at this search here, that clearly was not divulged as part of his bankrupt um, assets and shares in companies. This is, um, I don't know how you pronounce it, Niepi Proprietary Limited, that up until the um, 8th of August 2018, Adrian Peter Brennock held $100 worth of 100 shares in this company. A week before this final notice, he transferred all those shares to his wife, who now holds those, Christy Brennock. Now, you would think, all right, it's, it's not doing much business, it's not doing any business, but this Niepi is actually shareholders in other businesses, major shareholders in uh, the Mount Burrell commercial enterprise, in the NCV enterprises, and in Yadaki Capital. 
and holding shares in other companies that are also tied into that, that still feed back all these profits to the shareholder who is Niep Niepi Proprietary Limited. That up until a week before was sole property and ownership of somebody that was about to become a bankrupt. Now the fact that this is a current search and the current situation about the shareholders exists is that Christy Ann Brennock is the holder of those shares that her, tra her husband transferred to in an attempt to escape liability and having those shares declared as an asset and all the subsidiary companies that feed off back in to give this company profit from all its shareholdings in other member companies. Now this is a very complicated thing to get into, but essentially this company here is the one that shows Adrian Brennock a clear, um, see here, 8th of August 2018. He transferred all the shares to his wife, knowing and in an attempt to hide those shares from a bankruptcy notice, from a bankruptcy declaration. So in that, the fact that Christiane Brennock still holds those, you see anything within the last five years of a bankrupt can actually be looked at and reclaimed. So if he'd sold a house in the last five years, they could actually look at reclaiming uh, the value of that back too. And you can thank Alan Bond for these rules about putting assets into your wife's name to try and, and family members to try and escape legal responsibility for your debts. Uh, and Adrian Brennock has done this after he's been served with notice to, be, to give all these details, has knowingly concealed this and transferred the shares into his wife's name. Now, this is one of the first things that is going to come up in uh, relation to the Bankruptcy Act, the Corporations Act and also the Criminal Code where to knowingly attempt to set out to defraud or provide false or misleading information. I mean there's uh, lots of different sections under those three different laws I've just quoted that apply to just this one situation where it is clear and evident that under the threat of bankruptcy he has attempted to avoid detection by putting those shares in his wife's name. Now this is not an allegation, this is a statement of fact that, that these still exist in Christie and Brennock's name and not in the name of the trustee who seized the asset and also all the shares that that company was involved in. That person's name would actually be listed down here and it would be under some kind of administration because of the bankruptcy trustee who should be dealing with these. That is just one area of involvement where it has not been disclosed under the very clear definitions of the Bankruptcy Act what must be disclosed. And this is not an accident or an oversight. This is deliberately moving shares out of a company that holds shares in all the other companies that bring in the profits. This is basically the shell company that feeds all the profits back into it from all the other shares that they've purchased. So is Adrian Peter Brennock a bankrupt. Well, he admitted it. In this video, he admitted it. He knows he's a bankrupt and therefore he, he also understands that he has obligations under that bankruptcy. He has not upheld those legal obligations. He can dismiss it in this video and go, oh, that's just a title and it's not relevant to me. Well, 
mate it is. You live in Australia and you might be able to set yourself up in this little sovereignty illusion bubble where you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, but you are just as subject to the laws as anybody else. You are not above the laws in our country. You live by the laws of our country. You do not think that you are above them. So in being that you are subject to the laws of our country, in being that you have confessed that you know you are a bankrupt and you confess that it means nothing to you and that pretty much you don't intend to follow that because that's just a title. You know, it means nothing to me and people like me and Gunham and all of these others because we're so spiritually evolved and we just brush it off. And, you know, it was never proven. Oh, I tell you what, it is going to be proven. All the things that he has said that are false and misleading, the deliberate acts to conceal assets from the bankruptcy proceeds processes. There are lots of ways that Adrian Brennock is going to stand accountable and not be 10 foot tall and bulletproof and above the law. Sovereignty does not make you above the law. Okay? But if you think you are above the law and all your acts that you commit because you think you are above the law, that you deliberately mislead the general public because of this um, extremist philosophy that only you hold. Well, I'd have to say your other cult members do hold it too because if they don't, they don't get an invite to the exclusive membership club, do they? Got to go through five hours of interview and make sure you're the right group active mentality for this cult. Cult of, well, I'm not going to go too much into that. Just given enough juicy stuff here and the bankruptcy stuff that people that want to say that I don't know what I'm talking about, go and look it up for yourself. I'm not talking to fools who can't can't read. This is called a bankruptcy act. This is called a bankruptcy notice. And please, if you can't read it, get someone else that can that confirms this says Adrian Peter Brennock. Okay? He's confessed it. The documents are there to prove it. And this law here says he has broken his responsibilities under bankruptcy in so many ways. It is a matter of which do you pick to focus on because there's just so many. Really, you could present the whole Bankruptcy Act, just take out a few sections and say all of that rest applies to the conduct of this particular individual. And to also the company that was in his name, Wollumbin Horizons, that he actually used to seize control over the paid investors after misleading them. So this is a very involved story, but this video is a quick one to clear up the issue of is Adrian Brennock a bankrupt? Yes, he is a bankrupt and as that he has obligations. Just because he sits himself up there on land that is currently still pending settlement next month because the company that he bought it with is insolvent and is in receiver manage managership but they bought the property back as we see in the video that it's still their asset and you know what that's called illegal phoenixing they're proving it all and i i seriously dreaded cheetah's video evidence 
is going to be so valuable in court because so much does come down to he said, she said. But in this case, he said it straight out of his own mouth. It's not a matter of he said, she said. Uh, it's a matter of um, the audacity of someone that actually thinks that they're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, that's got away with so much for so long, that is actually so naive to the fact that, uh, what, you think it is going to last forever. No, his arrogance has actually provided the evidence that will sink him. His own video statements. Video evidence. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. And I really hope that uh, the people that think that it isn't evidence puts up some more. Please. You know, it, you're just making it easier to prove what I'm saying. You're not disproving anything. So that's Adrian Peter Brennock's bankruptcy. The next little episode I'm going to do will take us back right to the beginning of Bulla Bulla and we'll start it off with how it actually started at Bulla Bulla. For those that may not know the background and the, the, the backstory, uh, yes, we're going to take it from the affidavit which is again another legal sworn statement that was notarized uh, under threat of perjury for it being a false and all misleading statement an affidavit from the original person that instigated this with a dream a dream that like for so many others turned into a nightmare and simply because you've got a few people at the top of the pyramid playing the I want to get rich off other people's stupidity game. Because Adrian Brennock and uh, Mark Darwin, as the story starts with Bulla Bulla, were actually already involved in another community in Bellingen that was about to fail. And before that, well, there's more before that. But I haven't got that far in the investigations and I don't need to right now because uh, the aim of uh, my activities is to actually bring those relevant uh, legal quotes and offences to the attention of the authorities and if they want me to go online, fine. Uh, it's too easy to stick it all with links to all the evidence and tell them, fine, act. And you know what? I'm not going to just give them a little bit. I am going to give them a whole ton of it so that they can take their pick on which one they want to start focusing on. Because ultimately, when it comes down to it, police prosecution need to look at the strength of evidence and which charges they can actually win on and which ones are weak. So if I give them all the allegations, they can see which ones are strong, which ones are weak, and they can pick which ones they can go through with. Trust me, there are more strong ones than weak ones. But anyway, that's it for today on our, um, well, I'd like to call it a Clown of the Week award. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Enough said, I think. <laughs> Catch you next time.